The message of the new thought, its basic principles and true aims. From William Walker Atkinson. 1. The fundamental principle underlying all new thought ideas is that there exists an infinite and eternal spiritual principle of being. This principle of being, it is affirmed, is without beginning and without ending, without limits of time, space, or power, absolute, unconditioned, and alone without a second, a rival, or a companion. The qualities of omnipotence, omnipresence, and omniscience, all power, all presence, and all wisdom are attributed to it. 2. This principle of being is regarded as non-material and spiritual in its nature. It is thought of as pure spirit. The essence of spirit being regarded as mind. The principle of being is spoken of as universal mind. Its substance is regarded as mental substance. Its power is regarded as mental power. From this arises the statement that all is mind, including the manifestation, emanation, or expression of mind. 3. This principle of being is held to be one and one only. There being nothing in existence other than this one principle, the universe must be regarded as necessarily an emanation, manifestation, or expression of the one principle of being. And we, being a part of the universe, must also be an emanation, expression, or manifestation of that one principle of being. There is nothing else for us to be. Moreover, the one principle of being must be immanent in everything, in different degrees of expression and manifestation. By imminent is meant staying or remaining in, not passing out, inherent, internal, not transient. In these above stated first three fundamental principles of the new thought, we find a fundamental truth of idealistic philosophy, as old as the history of philosophic thought. There is nothing new about this truth. The same thing has been said by the ancient philosophers of India 5,000 years ago, by the philosophers of Greece 2,500 years ago, by Berkeley, Hegel, and Kant, and their followers. Then, where does the newness of new thought appear? 4. The new thought, reasoning from the first three principles of belief, proceeds as follows. It being conceded that man is an expression, emanation, or manifestation of the one principle of being, and that that principle must be imminent in him, just as he is contained within it, then it follows that its power, its presence, its mentality, its spirit, in fact, must abide within his being, limited only by his own limitations of power and ability to express it. Its nature being essentially mental, it must follow that man's power to apply and manifest its qualities must lie in the region of his own mentality. His only real power must be mind power. Therefore, in the degree that he is able to express and manifest this indwelling power must be his individual power. There is no other power to be no other place from which it may be drawn. From this arises the simple but clear definition of new thought, the recognition, realization, and manifestation of the God in me. 5. Proceeding from the above, new thought holds that our mental states, attitudes, ideas, images, and actions determine our mental and physical conditions and status. This agrees with the old biblical saying, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he and the equally positive statement of the Buddha that all that we are is the result of what we have thought. It is founded on our thoughts, it is made up of our thoughts. Not only is our character the result of our thoughts, but so also is our environment, our health, our physical condition, our degree of success and attainment. The new thought holds with Prentice Mulford and Swedenborg before him that thoughts are things. It holds that right thought expressed in right action will enable a man to realize all of his ideals. He may make real his ideals in this way. Health, happiness, and prosperity belong to man by right and may be realized by his recognition, realization, and manifestation of the principle within him by the proper exercise of his mental powers. Here then we find what makes the new thought new. It is the practical application of these world-old truths. It is the characteristic spirit of the age, the Western spirit, bringing into the field of practical everyday life the great truths of the past, bringing these great truths down from the realm of idealistic dreamings and mystical musings. The new thought has placed them in the midst of our actual, practical, busy life and set them to work. It has harnessed the spiritual forces, just as it has the material forces, and pressed them into service in the affairs of man.
It has placed within the hands of man the machinery for working out his own destiny, for mastering his own fate. It has discarded the old idea that man is a worm of the dust, a creature of fate, and a pawn of circumstance. It bids him lift his head and gaze with unfaltering eyes upon the universe, saying, I am the captain of my soul, the master of my fate, the ruler of circumstances. And this in no egotistical, vainglorious spirit, but rather from the knowledge that imminent in him is all the wisdom there is, all the presence there is, all the power there is, and that the degree of his attainment is limited only by the degree of his ability to express and manifest those imminent, indwelling qualities. It teaches man that he is not an alien or a machine, but rather a son of God, made not in the physical image of an anthropomorphic deity, but rather in the mental and spiritual image of a mental and spiritual father, begotten and born of spirit, not created from the dust of material substance. This is the message of the new thought to man. In the degree that he recognizes, realizes, and manifests its truth, does he become that which it tells him he really is? Is this not a new message of hope, faith, and courage to humanity? I ask this not a new thought for the race? But this is not all of the message. New thought does not stop with informing man of the means whereby he may become healthy, happy, and prosperous. It shows him his newly realized relation to his fellow man and to the universe of life. Let us proceed with our consideration of its principles. 6. The new thought teaches the brotherhood of man, as well as the fatherhood of God. It shows that since we are all expressions and manifestations of the one principle of life, then indeed are we all brothers and sisters in that life, each substance of the one substance, each mind of the one mind, each spirit of the one spirit. It teaches that there is no real separateness, that separateness is but the working fiction of the universe. It teaches that Tulpa life runs through all creation's veins, that, as the poet has sung, for the all is one, and all are part, and not apart as they seem to be, and the blood of life has a single heart, beating through God and Claude and May, and this realization must awaken love in all hearts for all life. The pain of the world becomes the pain of all, its joy, the joy of all. One's neighbor is indeed oneself, and one can love him even as oneself, if one accepts this message. And the message also causes one to love the one with all the might and power of his mind and his soul. The essence of all true religions, of all times, and all names, and all lands, is expressed in this message of love. Love then is seen to have a new meaning and reason and purpose and intent, the reconciliation and uniting of the many apparent parts of the whole, which are indeed but one at the last. Love, then, is the heart of the new thought. Its spirit is well expressed by William Marion Reedy, when he says, Love is the only law. Love is spirit, and matter the child of spirit. All this any man who reads may know. But where does it end? This intelligent love. There is a limit to the finite. But the finite is part of the infinite. It would seem that the pursuit of the law of love would bring one only to the unknowable, pushing it only a little further back. Love may follow where love leads, unto the essence of God even. For God is love. The material aspect of love need not deter us from pushing farther north. To those who believe in the oneness of matter and spirit, there is no unknowable. The end of the law of love and of the spiritual faculties for its perception can be the knowing of this unknowable union with the infinite. Let us make a flight. And this, then, is the basis of the ethics of new thought, the recognition, realization, and manifestation of the brotherhood of man, based upon the oneness of life and the fatherhood of God. Can there be any higher message, any more valid basis of ethics? But even this is not all of the message of the new thought. There is a still higher truth contained within it. It bids man look onward and upward while lending a helping hand. There is a seventh principle to be added to the foregoing six. Seven. The new thought teaches that man is in a stage of spiritual evolution pursuing the path of eternal progress. It teaches that he, in his unfoldment of the divine essence within himself, is opening himself to the expression of his spiritual powers, ever facing the central. Sunday slowly, but surely, does the awakened soul disentangle itself from the illusion of separateness and mortality, 
and take upon itself the qualities of oneness and immortality. Looking ever upward, onward, and forward, does it press forward on the path of attainment? Sheath after sheath of mortal illusion does it cast aside on the journey and reveal itself in more beautiful and rare, and still more beautiful and rare form and appearance. Like the hand discarding the glove, it becomes better adapted to feel the real things of being. It looks not behind. Its gaze is fixed on the scene before it. The past belongs to the past. The soul lives in the now. Each moment is a new moment to it. Each experience a new experience. Each place a new place. And all are seen as good and as a part of its spiritual life. To the awakened soul, it is always, I am here, now. And so it proceeds, ever advancing on the path of eternal progress, ever pressing on and on and on, to higher and still higher planes of existence and activity. Led by the voice of the spurt, listening to the song of the all-life, it rises higher and higher and higher, on and on and on. Such is the final message of the new thought. It is beautifully expressed by Holmes in The Chambered Nautilus. Build thee more stately mansions, O oh, my soul, as the swift seasons roll. Leave thy low-vaulted past. Let each new temple nobler than the last. Shut thee from heaven with a dome more vast, till thou at length art free, leaving thine outgrown shell by life's unresting sea. Regarding the details of the life of the soul, after it discards the material frame that has sheltered it, the new thought utters no dogmatic dictum. All shades of belief and theory regarding immortality are found among its followers. It leaves to the individual or the congregation of individuals the privilege of speculation. The new thought is not an organization, creed, cult, or church. Merely a body of affiliated thinkers in sympathy regarding fundamentals, though perhaps differing as to interpretation. But as its fundamentals are based upon the one spirit, in which all expressions of spirit must exist as the drop exists in the ocean, it must declare for the indestructibility of spirit. It must, and does, voice the truth contained in the ages-old Bhagavad Gita. Mayak the spirit was born. The spirit shall cease to be never. Never was time it was not. End and beginning are dreams. Birthless and deathless and changeless remains the spirit forever. Death has not touched it at all. Dead though the house of it seems. And under all its beliefs, there is a general agreement that after eons and eons have passed, and the individual spirit has reached higher and still higher planes, there may, and probably will, come a time, when it will once more seek the bosom of the Father, and find there that eternal peace and rest which the infinite alone can supply, that blessed union of, which the mystics of all ages, lands, and all religions have fondly dreamt, and of which the Buddhistic poets sing. The dew is on the lotus, rise, great sun, and lift my leaf, and mix me with the wave. The message of the new thought is for you. Why not apply its teachings in your everyday life, just as millions of others have done. You can never tell what you can do until you try.